in this little presentation, there will be two parts. One part I will talk about, you know, the overview band protocol and the, the challenges we post on this hackathon. And the second part, we will, you know, present some demo, just a quick demo to, 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 for you guys to get the sense of like, you know, how the IBC actually works, you know, apart from just the theoretical, how do you actually, you know, program the blockchain to communicate between each other. Okay, so, so that's it. Uh, so let me start by talking about band protocol overview. Uh, so as you probably know, we are a decentralized data oracle protocol. What that means is that we connect off-chain data, right? Uh, like price data or identity data or sport data, right? We have our own economic incentive to make sure that data is trusted, bring it to band chain. And then from band chain, you can relay that data onto other layer one blockchains, right? Or Cosmos using IBC or Polkadot or Ethereum. We have full implementation of, you know, bridging architecture with Ethereum. So that's band protocol. And our team is quite diverse. Uh, you can see it from the slide. And we are backed by Binance among other investors. So let me uh, touch quite quickly on this. Uh, we want, I want to stress that you know, DeFi is growing very rapidly. And if you look at you know, the history growth of DeFi back you know, one year, it's, it's, it's crazy you know, in, all other, in all every categories, right? You know, lending protocol, stable coin, derivatives, and DEXs, right? And we think uh, you know, this growth, while it, like, right now is on Ethereum, it will not be limited there, right? You know, many layer one protocols are getting deployed in production this year. You know, Cosmos IBC is also getting ready, right? I think, I think it's very important for DeFi, right? Or you as a hacker, right? To try to, you know, build, you know, this capture this growth, right? right? Onto other platform as well. And if you notice that, if you notice, you know, the, the fourth row of, of, this, of, of, of the table, you can see that, you know, all of this, protocols actually require Oracle to, 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 to work, right? You know, some protocols right now use centralized Oracle, some are transition to decentralized Oracle. So I think it's very important, you know, for Oracle to work, right? And, and that's why we are very keen to building band protocol. And as I said earlier, we are trying to make, you know, band protocol as blockchain agnostic as possible. So we support module platforms, right? Uh, for layer one protocol, we build kind of like our own, uh, like client protocol on top of, you know, different blockchain, right, on a smart contract level, right? So we have a bridge contract on Ethereum that can verify the, 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 the Merkle proof of, this, of, of the state of band chain. And then someone can relay and saying that, oh, this is Oracle on band protocol on Ethereum, right? Same for all the platform that we support. Uh, for Cosmos, it's quite special, although, because, you know, we built using Cosmos SDK already. So we natively support IBC as one of our modules. So if you are building using Cosmos SDK, you can actually consume data from Bandchain natively. And I will show you, you know, you know, at the second part of this presentation, what that means, right? And with Bandchain, we have uh, three main design goals, right? Uh, first, we want to make the Oracle as flexible as possible. We actually allow you to code how your Oracle work, you know, in a domain specific language, right? That describe where to get the data, how to aggregate data, that is fully flexible. And, you know, we want seamless support to different blockchain, I already talked about this. And we actually also support uh, both public data, right? Data that you can actually get from the web uh, and also private data. In that case, we have payment layer on, on chain right, as well. So you can actually pay for data on band chain and then get the data ready for, for your application. As a simplified version, this is very specific to Cosmos, right? So if you are building your Cosmos application, you can send an IBC packet, an Oracle request packet to band chain, right? And that packet will encode, you know, which Oracle script to run and also the call data, right? The parameter of that script, right? And that script is already de deployed on band chain, right? The script is essentially very similar to smart contract, but very specific, right? So the script encodes, you know, which data sources do you want, right? You know, Binance, CoinGecko, Crypto Compare, for example, if you want price data, right? And also, how do you aggregate data from different sources among different data providers, right? And and that is, you know, coded on onto the the blockchain, right? And once this is received on band chain our validators will pick up the request and then inspect the request and go through the sources, right? To submit it back onto band protocol, right? And once the process is complete uh, on chain, 
we will aggregate the data using your code, right? Uh, to get the final value. And that will get sent back to Cosmos to your blockchain using the same IBC protocol now as the Oracle response packet, right? So essentially what you are doing on your app is just you request data and you get response and you don't need to worry about how you can get your validators, right? To manage to, to come together and, and submit data. How do you ensure that, you know, all the script is running correctly? That is, you know, part of the band protocol, right? So we right. kind of provide service. And, and could you give some examples? So the data sources that are provided here, these are um, financial data sources. Are there other examples of like types of data sources that you, you, you could think of for different types of applications? Yeah, uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, I think I think the most obvious one is like prediction market of, of gaming or gambling, right? Uh, anything that you can get from the web, you can get through our our platform, right? You know, weather data, uh, like sport data, or even identity data. For example, if you want to connect to some service that verify that this address is actually a person, you can also do that, right? So yeah. it's quite flexible, and and yeah, and, yeah I'll show you during during the second part. <laughs> cool, cool. Hey. Okay, so about this cross-chain hackathon, we have uh, three main challenges. Uh, it's quite uh, like uh, in, in the with you know our, 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 our uh, Cosmos and and Acoric. So the first challenge is actually uh, building the dy dynamic IBC for band protocol on Acoric platform, right? As Dean said, uh, uh, IBC uh, dynamic IBC you know allows you to basically parse the packet after you actually deploy your chain, right? And in band protocol, Oracle response is actually a plain, like plain go slice of bytes, right? So it'd be good if, you know, we can pass the, the, this slice of bytes into specific data structure for smart contract to use, right? So that's the first challenge. And the second challenge is, you know, building DeFi application using band protocol price feed, right? Uh, I kind of get into this a little bit uh, on the second slide, but we think DeFi is, is, is going to be big, you know, on, on, on the Cosmos ecosystem with the IBC enable, and we want to support that, right? Uh, you, you can come build using us and, and, and we will support it. And the third challenge is quite similar to the second challenge, but now, you know, with, you know, uh, different other kinds of application, right? I mean, DeFi is big right now, but but other things can 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 come too, right? So so you know this is you know other real world data, you know weather data, sport data, or anything that you, you can get creative, and and this is the the third challenge. Um, one other thing that I want to stress is that um you know at at, at the launch time um at the beginning we probably won't have you know all the data sources for you. Right. Um, but um, here's the thing. Um, whatever data that you want from the internet, um, you can come and talk to us, and we'll, we will facilitate so that um, that data is available on band protocol. Next thing, uh, I think Peter talked about this a little bit, but we actually have been collaborating with Cosmos to write a very compre comprehensive guide of building a simple DeFi application using IBC protocol to connect to both Cosmos and band protocol. Right. So. So, so this will be from scratch, like you clone kind of like a, a basic Gaia and then, you know, build a new module and run a relayer and everything, right? And, 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 and we will publish this in, in a few days. Uh, but with this, you will learn how to create your first Cosmos blockchain with IBC and how to set up the, the relayer for token transfer, right? To transfer Atom from, from the Gaia to your blockchain and also how to consume price data uh, from band protocol on your blockchain as well. But I actually am going to be showing the end result of this uh, tutorial, you know, in, in, in this call. Ooh, cool. So yeah, so it's just a quick overview about what this system is about. Uh, what we're building is what is what we call gold chain. It's a blockchain for, for minting synthetic gold. Uh, it's the, 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 the mechanic is very similar to MakerDAO, but pegged to a gold price instead, right? So, so it's like one, one gold token is like one ounce of gold, right? And what happened, what happened is that, you know, uh, you, we have a relayer that, that you can send Atom token from the Gaia testnet. Uh, we are uh, spinning up our own testnet right now for Gaia and send Atom to the gold chain. And then you can use this Atom as the collateral to mint for the gold 
to go token, right? And this, you will need to consult band protocol for the current price of both the gold price in dollar and atom price in dollar, right? To know how much gold token can be mint without getting under, collater under collateralization, right? So this is, you know, the, the demo that I'm going to be showing. Uh, yeah, and yeah, let's get to it. So can you see my screen? Yes. Uh, we're still on the Google Slides. Um, okay. You can see my terminal, right? Now we can. Yep. Okay. Uh, so first, let me show you this uh, page first. This is the Bandchain Explorer. We deploy it specifically for, for the hackathon already. And, you know, there are four nodes mining blocks and it's coming and there are transactions. The, what's interesting though is we built the IBC page as well. So this will show uh, the, the incoming packet to Bandchain, like, like Oracle request, and also the outgoing packet from Bandchain to other chain, right? This is go, going to, to the chain called Band Consumer. Uh, so, so you, you know, with this, you can explore what's going on with, with the IBC packet, you know, to and from Bandchain. Uh, but let me get into the command line first. So here I have uh, four tabs, right? The first tab is actually uh, the gold chain that is that, that is running on my local machine, right? Uh, I have the band chain and, and Gaia chain actually running on, on, on AWS right now. It's up on the cloud, uh, but this is the, the gold chain. The second tab is a relayer. This is a relayer connecting between the local gold chain and the Gaia blockchain. Okay, you can see it's, it's connecting from band consumer. And if I scroll up a little bit, uh, it should say it connect from band consumer to band Cosmos hub. This is the, the test that Gaia. And the third tab is the relayer connecting the band consumer, which is gold chain, and the IBC band chain, which is the band chain for serving Oracle data. So- And, and the Oracle data in this case is the price of gold? The price of gold and the price of atom and the price of Adam, thank you. Yes, so we'll see that in a, in a minute. So the first step is I want to check the balance of our account right now. So I will test the transfer of Adam from Gaia to the gold chain, right? This is the, the, the way to check the balance of, of my user in gold chain. I have some gold already, but let's just ignore that. Uh, but here I have Adam, this is the way Adam is represented on gold chain. It's actually Adam transfer from Gaia, right? Uh, and if I issue this transaction, this is a transfer transaction uh, sent to the Gaia blockchain saying that I want to transfer this much atom to this address, which is, you know, my address on, on gold chain, right? Uh, I mean, this, this much atom, actually, this is the expiration term. And this is sending to the, the, the Gaia blockchain, not my gold chain. So, once I click this and press yes, it will broadcast the transaction. And now, if I look at the relayer, the relayer, the relayer actually picks up the, trans, the packet on Gaia, right? And it will relay the packet onto the gold chain. Right now, the packet is already relayed. So if I go back to gold chain, uh, before this, I have, uh, I have this much atom, the 16 something. If I check my balance right now, you can see that I have more atom now. It is actually transfer from the Gaia to this gold chain. Okay, so this is the first step of you know transferring token, right? This is built in on, on Cosmos already, uh, and there's not no, no more code to be written for you. Uh, it's all on 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 the packet, on 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 the the, the exporter. Okay, so this is done. Uh, on the next step is that we will send the the buy transaction. This is not buy. It's actually you know, like minting the gold token, right? Uh, and to, to, the, to the gold chain. And what happened is that when you send this to gold chain, gold chain will send a request to band chain asking for the price data. And then band chain will reply back. And after band chain replies back, the gold chain will resume the execution and mint the gold token for you, you know, depending on the price. So I will copy this command and I will have the explorer ready to see what's going on. And then I will send this command. If we look at this closely, uh, hopefully we will see that the, the band chain 
will get an incoming packet. It should, yeah, there we go. So it gets an incoming packet uh, saying that someone wants a gold price. And then, you know, after a few seconds, Van Chain collect the result from all the validators and then send the packet back to your chain saying that, you know, this is the current gold price. Uh, this is multiplied by 1 million. This is the how, how many atoms is one ounce of gold. Right, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll go into this a little bit, how, how, what is the Oracle script that actually produced this data, okay? But after this is done, if I look at my balance, you can see that I have more gold now and I have less atom because some atom is going, going to, is, is locked to mint the gold token and that's the whole process. Any questions so far before I go into how data is actually, you know, becoming available? That's awesome. That's all I have to say for now. Yeah. Okay. So let me just go a little bit deeper into, you know, what is actually happening on band protocol, right? How do we take the one, one, one argument? This is the argument from, from cold chain. It wants the price multiplied by this, you know, not to, to not lose too much of the precision. Right. And this is the return result so to the request, right? This is R7 request number seven. It say that it requests to these four validators, the, the pitching guy, the evil guy or what, right? And it actually have a lot of information. It actually wants data from two sources, the Binance, the, the Binance price of Atom and the gold price. And this is the parameter, the, the multiplier, and this is the final result. And the raw data report from each of the validator. So, so this validator for the data number one, the, the gold price, it report this uh, dollar per ounce, and for number two, it reports this atom price, right? And, and they are all reporting the same data because you know, they are executing it very pretty much the same time, right? And we can actually go into the Oracle script to see what exactly is written onto the Oracle script, right? Uh, we can go into the code. We call it Oracle WebAssembly because it's then WebAssembly for Oracle. Uh, and it actually explained you know, the input is the multiplier, the output will be the price. And in the prepare phase, you know, the phase where you say, what data do you want? You want data from the source number five without parameters and the source number three with parameter atom. And at the end, after you get all the data, we want to get the average price of gold and average price of atom. And then, and then the output is the gold price times multiplier divided by atom price. Right, so this is all you know freely available for you to code. You know, any code is, is acceptable as Oracle as long as you know it it implement prepares to to say which sources you want and execute to to say how to aggregate the raw result into one final output, right? And and if you look at here, you can see the related data source. Right, we use source number five and number three. Uh, number five is gold price. If you look at the code, it's actually go into this website and then and then pass the JSON, right? Go into the free forex API, get the price of XAU because XAU is gold, and then get the rate, right? And this is the code that each validator execute it for you, right? And you can actually test execution here. If you click test execution, your browser is actually executing this code and say this output. So you can actually see what output is going it, it, it is going to be without actually needing to to, to, to run the blockchain or, or, or pay the real gas fee. Mm -hmm. right? And if we go to the, the third data source, this is the Binance data source, the code, obviously it will get data from Binance and then do some parsing and get the mid price between bid and ask, right? Uh, if you test execution, you can, you know, see Adam, you get the price of Adam. If you type ban, you get the price of ban token. Uh, yeah, so this is the sources. Uh, and as Paul said, uh, currently on, on the test, we just have a few data sources, but we are happy to write more for you, you know, depending on what you need. It's, it's quite simple, as you can see. Uh, it, it can be any script, and then our, our, our validators will be happy to run and, and get the data for you. Yeah, this is so, awesome. And oh, yeah, if I, if I could ask one question just on gold as an example, if like two or three oracles end up with slightly different prices, how does the, how does the system account for that? Yes, so, so it's actually depending on you, right? Uh, this, 
we call a built-in function called load average. So it's actually take the average of all the results, right? The number one here is like matching this. This is what we call external ID. So like if you, you load number one, you get the result from the request for one. The five is the, is the data source, right? So this you can, we, we have our own built-in like load average, load majority, load median, but you can also go low level and get each of the numbers, right? And decide right. what to do with it. You can filter out outliers. You can, you can basically do anything with it. Makes yeah. sense, makes sense. And a related question in the chat from Adriana was how long does settlement take when, you, when you're using this data? Yeah, so as soon as data is coming from, from validators, so if we look at the, at the transaction, at the transaction, uh, you can see that it's a little bit grumpy here, but, but we get the, 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 the data request packet on block 25, and then uh, our block time is about one, one second. So, you know, in, in the next three seconds, the first validator report data. And then on the next block, the other three validators come to report. So, you know, as soon as the enough validators report data, then if you kick off the aggregation process and send the data back to you, 